So it says night meteorology is basically the atmospheric sciences, which includes atmospheric chemistry, physics, and obviously the, the major focus is on forecasting. Where do we get it from? National meteorological offices. So in the UK, it's the Met Office in South Africa, South African Weather Service. In America, it comes from the American Weather, uh, weather Services. Most countries have some sort of Met Office and they share information with each other all the time. Where can we get it from personally? Internet, very, very good source. So I think all of you or, or most of you have seen the group files we get on board the boats. Weather charts, they're becoming outdated. So this is a, a chart that shows an area of the world and these little stars, they show what the predicted weather has been over a period of time, specifically for that month. So what the wind speed was, so if you're planning a trip across the Atlantic, they're very useful. Cell phone, cell phone weather reports. These are basically companies that are taking national off, national weather and just making it easy for you to use. And then obviously, because we're at sea, we get VHF, MRSAT C, SSP radio reports from all the land-based stations. We also get them in text format from nav text. So if you look at this one, it's the UK coast. It gives us barometric pressure, our forecast. And then it literally goes through what the forecast is going to be. Bofa scale. It's a scale that we use sailing, which was invented by Rear Admiral Sir Francis Beaufort. He was one of the greatest navigational seamen ever. And he created this system to make sure that the British Navy could arrive at the same time at the same place. It's based on sea state, not wind, because they had no means in those days of recording wind speed. So what they said was that many waves, that many breakers, that meant it was that. So if we look at it, each Beaufort scale, so if you read the first one, it says ripples appearing on scales are formed without foam crests. That means there's almost no wind. So your Beaufort scale is based on what the sea is doing, not the wind. Eventually, now we've got wind speed and we can record it accurately. We've given gaps of wind in knots. So when you fill in your logbook, you fill it in in Beaufort scale because it's never going to be 18 knots. It might well be 17 to 21 and a Beaufort force five. It's going to gust up, it's going to gust down, it's going to gust up, it's going to gust down. We will always talk about a, a force, force four. So that means the wind's blowing between 11 and 16. Small waves becoming larger, frequent white horses. That's what the sea will look like. The sea state is how we derive it. What's happening on the sea. So when you want to learn your Beaufort force, you want to learn what the sea state is, because that will give you your wind speed. Highs and lows, all wind pressure moves from a high pressure to a low pressure doesn't matter where or what it does in the world. It all works from high pressure to low pressure. Low pressure is when air is rising. High pressure is when air is falling. Low pressure generally means foul weather and high pressure generally means good weather. And when we talk about pressure, we're talking about air pressure because obviously the air moves around the planet all the time. The world's currents, control temperature and the temperature is then creates low or high pressure. The rotation of the earth also changes how things work. So if you think about a ball spinning, which we are, whole planet, the air is going to move off in the opposite direction to the spin. It's called Coriolis. So the northern hemisphere high pressures will always be deflected in a clockwise direction. Whereas the Southern Hemisphere will always be anti-clockwise. Low pressures, because they're actually dropping, not going up, 
go the opposite direction. So if we talk about a low pressure in a front, here's a front, okay? It's the leading edge of a low pressure. So what's happening is the high pressure is trying to come in here. It brings all its moisture. It brings all its nastiness in, creates condensation, and we get fronts. Definitely poor weather following them. Absolutely poor weather. It doesn't all happen at, at sea level. We need to remember that things happen at altitude. Here you've got a front coming in, high pressure moving to low. So it's sucking the low in towards it, pushes it up, creates condensation. Then you get England, pouring rain, visible weather. So if we look here at the synoptic chart, here's a high pressure off the east coast of Australia. And when I talk about high pressure, we're talking about barometric pressure. So there's 1,025. Look how far away the isobars are. Almost no wind movement. Yet you look down here at the low pressure, they're very close together, lots of wind. That high is trying to move its weather here. And as the high moves its weather here, that is moving around the world because of Coriolis. So weather will always move from the west to the east. And the closer together, your barometric pressure lines are the faster the wind speed. So up here, there'll be almost no wind on this particular synoptic. Down here, it'll be howling. 